Slovakia is embarking on a dramatic shift in its armored forces, choosing to abandon heavy main battle tanks in favor of lighter, more cost-effective alternatives. The country's defense authorities have narrowed their options to the Swedish CV-90120 and an unnamed Turkish vehicle, effectively sidelining the Leopard 2A8 and South Korea's K2, both of which have been adopted by Slovakia's neighbors, the Czech Republic and Poland. This decision signals a significant recalibration of Slovakia's military priorities, one driven by cost considerations, mobility requirements, and the evolving nature of modern warfare. The Slovak Ministry of Defense, led by Robert Kalinak, has emphasized that lighter tanks could cost 40 to 50 percent less than traditional main battle tanks, offering a compelling fiscal incentive. A Leopard 2A8, for instance, can reach a price tag of nearly 32 million euros per unit, while the K2, without localization or domestic production, costs around 20 million euros. In contrast, the lighter vehicles under consideration promise a more manageable price point without a dramatic reduction in firepower. For Slovakia, this presents an opportunity to modernize its armored forces while staying within budget constraints, a critical factor for a mid-sized European military balancing numerous defense priorities. However, this cost advantage comes with significant trade-offs. Both the CV-90120 and the Turkish alternatives are essentially upgraded infantry fighting vehicles rather than purpose-built main battle tanks. While their 120mm and 105mm guns provide formidable offensive capability, their armor and protection levels remain lower than those of conventional MBTs. This raises questions about survivability on a modern battlefield, particularly against anti-tank guided missiles and advanced artillery systems, which have proliferated across conflict zones in recent years. By prioritizing mobility and affordability over armor, Slovakia is taking a calculated risk that may limit the operational flexibility of its armored units in high-intensity combat scenarios. The CV-90120, developed by Sweden, has long been marketed as a light tank capable of bridging the gap between infantry fighting vehicles and main battle tanks. Despite its 25-year history, it has not secured any international buyers, highlighting skepticism about its battlefield viability. Nonetheless, Slovakia sees potential benefits in aligning its new acquisition with existing domestic production of the CV-90 infantry fighting vehicle. Such synergy could streamline maintenance, spare part supply, and crew training, creating a level of logistical efficiency that heavier, foreign-built MBTs cannot match. In essence, the Swedish option offers Slovakia a chance to leverage established industrial relationships while acquiring a vehicle that is more adaptable to the nation's terrain and mobility requirements. On the Turkish side, although the exact vehicle under consideration remains unnamed, industry analysts point to the Odokar Tulper and the Kaplan MT as likely candidates. Both vehicles are derivatives of infantry fighting platforms, modified with heavier turrets and larger caliber guns. The Tulper, for example, can be fitted with the Italian-made HitFact 2 turret, similar to the one installed on the Santoro 2 light tank, while the Kaplan MT incorporates a 105mm gun from Belgian manufacturer John Cockerill. Despite these upgrades, both platforms have struggled to gain traction internationally, indicating that Slovakia would be entering uncharted territory if it pursued either option. Another potential Turkish candidate, the Altai main battle tank, is largely ruled out due to its limited production schedule and high cost. After nearly two decades of development, Altai tanks are only now entering mass production, with projected deliveries to the Turkish armed forces stretching into the late 2020s. Even at full production, the Altai remains expensive relative to light tank alternatives, and supply constraints would make it a challenging option for Slovakia. Consequently, the decision effectively narrows the field to lighter, more readily available vehicles, albeit at the expense of protection and proven combat effectiveness.
The Slovak case reflects a broader strategic dilemma faced by smaller European nations, how to modernize armored forces within constrained budgets while responding to evolving threats. Traditional main battle tanks offer unparalleled protection and firepower but are costly to acquire and maintain. Light tanks and heavily armed IFV derivatives, by contrast, provide mobility and cost efficiency but fall short in survivability. Slovakia's choice underscores a growing trend among medium-sized militaries to reconsider the traditional MBT paradigm, exploring whether lighter, more versatile platforms can fulfill the same battlefield roles under modern operational conditions. This strategic recalibration also raises historical questions about the role of medium tanks, a class that largely disappeared in the 1960s and 1970s with the global shift toward main battle tanks. Medium tanks once provided a compromise between firepower, mobility, and protection, offering an adaptable solution for diverse operational environments. Today, however, no significant investment is being made in this category, leaving countries like Slovakia with only lighter IFV-derived options if they wish to avoid the costs associated with MBTs. The absence of a true medium tank alternative means Slovakia must carefully weigh the trade-offs between affordability, mobility, and battlefield survivability, a decision with potentially far-reaching implications for the effectiveness of its armored forces. From a strategic perspective, Slovakia's emphasis on light tanks may reflect both regional and geopolitical considerations. The country's terrain, characterized by mountainous regions and constrained infrastructure, favors vehicles with higher mobility and lower logistical demands. In this context, lighter armored vehicles could be more effective than heavier MBTs, which are often restricted by road capacity and maintenance requirements. Additionally, Slovakia's decision may signal an interest in greater interoperability with existing NATO partners, particularly those already employing light or medium-weight armored platforms, while avoiding the procurement of platforms that could complicate logistics and joint operations. Nonetheless, the decision is not without controversy. Military analysts have pointed out that the inherent limitations of light tanks, particularly their reduced armor protection, could expose Slovak forces to disproportionate risk in high-intensity conflicts. Anti-tank guided missiles, drone-delivered munitions, and modern artillery systems increasingly threaten lightly armored vehicles, creating a potential vulnerability on the battlefield. In this sense, Slovakia's approach may prioritize cost and maneuverability over survivability, raising questions about whether the country is adequately preparing for future armored engagements. The Slovak case may also serve as a bellwether for wider European trends in armored warfare. As nations face mounting budget pressures and evolving threat landscapes, the debate over light versus heavy platforms is likely to intensify. Slovakia's willingness to prioritize cost-effectiveness and mobility over traditional firepower and armor protection could influence other mid-sized European militaries to explore similar approaches, potentially reshaping the armored battlefield in the years ahead. However, whether this gamble will pay off remains uncertain, as the success of light tanks in real-world combat has historically been limited, and their effectiveness against modern anti-tank threats is still largely untested. In conclusion, Slovakia's decision to favor the Swedish CV-90120 and a Turkish light tank alternative over the Leopard 2A8 and K2 represents a significant strategic pivot. Driven by cost considerations, mobility needs, and logistical synergies, the country is taking a calculated risk that balances affordability and adaptability against survivability and proven combat performance. The choice highlights both the constraints faced by smaller militaries and the evolving debate over the future of armored warfare in Europe. As Slovakia moves forward, the international defense community will be watching closely to see whether light tanks can truly offer a viable alternative to traditional main battle tanks or whether this experiment will expose new vulnerabilities on the modern battlefield.